Hi, this is Bob from Insidium, and in this tutorial, we're going to use constraints to create a chain reaction. We will set some particles to grow over time, dependent on their movement, and it'll be the constraints which will force that movement, creating this organic growth. So let's use our constraints connect at birth to set up a procedural growth kind of chain reaction simulation. So we're going to bring in a plane. Let's put an X particles collider tag on that with a bit of friction. So this plane is going to be our emitter object. So we'll go to X particles. Let's bring in a system to keep everything organized and we'll switch that icon off and the emitter we're going to emit from the plane. So let's go to the emitters object tab, emitter shape. We'll go to object and we'll drag in our plane we want to omit from the polygon area kind of randomly across this surface and in the emission tab let's switch off the speed and we want to put it into shot so it's shooting out particles on one frame so if I go forward a frame there are our random looking particles we might increase this a bit later Right, so to help with setting this up, let's just change the display options. Instead of dots, we'll look at circles. Now, circles are useful because it shows the actual radius of the particle itself. Dots just show dots. You have no idea how big they are. And we're also going to display constraints as well. Uh, we don't have any constraints yet, but when we create them, we'll be able to see them in the viewport. Right, so there we go. So let's bring in those constraints then. So we'll go to the Dynamics tab and we'll choose a dynamic object and it's going to be the XP constraints. There we go. And in the constraints, we want to connect these particles. We want to connect them at birth. So we'll pick the birth ones and let's just keep it at d default and see what happens, see what we get. OK, so we get this kind of web of particles and they're all kind of interconnected um, I think for this look we're going to want more particles so I'm going to go back to my emitter to the emission tab let's bump this up to say 5000 so there's a load of particles and what I want to do I'm just going to turn momentarily turn those particles back to dots so we can see these constraints so that's looking really detailed. I think we need fewer connections um, per particle though. So let's go to the constraints. We'll go to the connections and we'll turn down connection limit to say, um, we'll start with three. And it's gonna look different, but we can see that we've got kind of interconnected particles, but they're all kind of connected somewhere along the lines, which is important because we want to use the fact that there is a bit of a global connection going on here to create our chain reaction. Excellent. So if I hit play, nothing happens because there are no forces in this scene uh, making these particles move so in effect the constraints aren't having to do anything there's no kind of tension being put on them because the particles aren't moving so let's just go back to the emitter and stick it back on circles now if I go forward a frame, now we're in circle mode, you can see that a lot of these particles have been born in an intersected state, they're on top of each other so if I go to my constraints and I switch on my particle collisions, it's going to immediately try and force these interconnected particles apart because the collisions, that's what it does. So let's just go forward a frame and you can see they're all being pushed apart and the constraints are trying to pull them back. Some of the constraints are tearing and we're getting this look. But just by doing that, you can see that all the particles in some way are connected and we're getting this kind of global organic looking movement across the whole plane. So that's useful. It's not right yet, but this is what we're going to take advantage of. So if I go to my emitter and I put the radius way down to, um, well, let's just put the radius on nothing. So now, because the particles have no radius, they can't um, collide and the constraints, collisions can't work anything out and so nothing's happening and the constraints aren't moving. So this is what we're going to do. We are going to scale these particles up and they're going to be born with no radius and then we're going to scale them up and they're going to get to a certain point where they start uh, intersecting and then they'll start pushing each other apart because of the constraints collisions and then the constraints are going to try and hold them together and it is going to make it 
make this turn into a, a chain reaction and the way in which we scale them up is going to be key so let's have a look what we're going to do is go to the modifiers and we'll bring in a control modifier because we want to control the scale so let's bring that in and the scale modifier let's go to the object tab we don't want them to get bigger over time let's watch what happens if we if we do that so they're gonna grow and when they start intersecting they do and then they start spitting out all over the place so that's not what we want we want to set the value and the value that's being set is the particle radius and let's set this up at like say five so now all that's going to happen is the particles are going to be born the scale modifier is going to make them five centimeters and they're going to collide off each other and smash apart so again this is not what we want but here's the key we are going to map this radius value so let's go to the mapping and we're going to add a map and the parameter we want to affect by this map is not the scale change it is the radius value so let's pick that and what do we want to map it to well at the moment it's mapped to age so what it's saying is when the particles are zero frames old which is here they will have zero percent of this radius value figure which is five so when they're born they'll have no radius and by the time they get to 90 frames old which is this dot they will have the full radius value which is five so let's have a look so they're getting bigger getting bigger that's it so that's working it's not what we want but I just wanted to do that to um, tell you how this graph works so let's change it from age to this we're going to change it to how far the particle has moved and if we just click that on so at the moment it's saying if the particle has not moved at all then give it a radius of no, uh, zero zero percent of this amount so because none of them are moving they should all just have zero radius and we're not getting any animation at all we're not ever getting to this bit where they've moved a hundred centimeters because they never move but this is the trick so what we'll do is let's just put another knot in here what we're saying is when they haven't moved at all they have no radius then when they've moved a little bit they get the full radius value which is five and then as they start moving more and more and more they're going to start getting smaller again okay so that's the curve we want but if we hit play still nothing's happened because they've never got away from this point they've never moved nothing's making them move so they're staying at zero percent scale so how do we get them to bunch up to this bit where they start getting bigger well there's a couple of different ways we, that we could do this but what we're going to do is give ourselves a collider object so let's just get a sphere and scale it down this is going to be my collider object now, i'm not going to be rendering this sphere and let's just duplicate this collider tag that's on our floor plane onto the sphere and hit play so nothing's happening but if I move this down and collide it into the particles, it's going to make them move. Just the particles around here. And as they move, they're then, then going to scale up because of the scale modifier. And that's going to cause, we hope, a bit of a chain reaction. Because as they move and they scale up, they will then um, collide off each other, which makes them move even more, which makes more scale up and more scale up, and the constraints are tying them and pulling them and making them move, and that's how we get this chain reaction of, of velocity. So let's have a look. Do this, and there the chain reaction begins all the way along those constraints. So that's really cool. Let's just put some more um, frames in this timeline. Okay. Okay, right, so there we go. We'll make them move by colliding them, and then we start off this big chain reaction. And the chain reaction is being caused because they're being scaled up. They are then colliding off each other, which is making other ones scale up, which makes them collide off other ones. And all at the same time, the constraints are pushing and pulling them, which is making them move, which is making them scale up, which is making them collide. And it's, it's going on and on and on. And that's why we get this chain reaction. But it looks pretty decent. Very nice. So let's just try and slow that 
chain reaction down a little bit, shall we? So we'll go to the constraints. So how might we do that? Well, we could make the constraints a bit stiffer. We could go to the scale modifier and maybe make them scale up not as much. Let's have a look. Has that made much difference? All right. And maybe in the constraints, in the collisions, we could turn the stiffness down of those collisions so they, they're not quite pushing them around as much, which means it should be a bit slower. Yeah, there we go, look. That's much more fluid now. And it really looks a little bit like a kind of procedural growth system, this. Even though we aren't growing these particles, they're, they're, they're being born and they're just being moved around. But that's looking really nice and really organic like that so what we could do is we could perhaps get them to fade down a little bit more quickly so they're not big the whole time so let's go back to that mapping of that scale and let's just bring this knot we could even bring this knot in a bit so they're going to scale up and then start scaling down again as they travel further and further all right and that's looking very nice and organic i like it so we could perhaps scale them up a little bit bigger now now that we've managed to kind of quell that a little bit and it's a very cool look uh, I'm not too happy with that let's put it back down to five so you can see that it's fine it's working okay they're starting to float off a little bit though as these kind of constraints are flying off all over the place um, I don't necessarily want that so another way that we could sort this out a little bit and control it a bit more and arrest that movement would be to add a gravity modifier so let's go to the motion modifiers we'll add a gravity let's play it again now the gravity is immediately creating a force which is pushing those particles into this collider tag which is making them move which is making them grow and then they're starting uh, this um, whole uh, kind of chain reaction without us controlling it with the sphere and that's not what we want so we need to map the power of this gravity a little bit like we did the scale so it's not affecting the particles at first so how might we do that let's go to the gravity mod and we'll go to the mapping tab we'll add a map and we're going to yes map gravity strength to at the moment by default it's mapped to age but again let's let's pick distance traveled again and just going to add a knot so when they start moving, the gravity is going to take hold, or we can maybe just leave it like that. Let's have a look. So it's working, and as they start work moving, the gravity is kind of holding them on. And you can see that that's really arrested the spread of this, hasn't it, somewhat? So um, let's have a look. What could we do? Um, we could increase the scale now, now now I think we're going to be able to make these much bigger and because we've got that gravity pulling them into that plane it's still not going completely berserk so that's looking pretty nice we have got some slow down it tends to happen when you map um, gravity it can slow down your scene so do you know what let's just take that mapping off for now and just have it as it was take the gravity off completely actually and there we go I mean that's that's actually a better look isn't it so that's looking fine excellent so at the moment we've got our constraints breaking as well which is um, giving us actually quite a nice look but you might not want that you might want to keep them connected all of the time so let's just try turning that breaking off so let's go to the constraints connections we'll go to the break as and put it to none so those constraints can never break and now let's see that looks pretty nice and we've got this really nice kind of shock wave as it moves along so that's looking pretty good and I think we can maybe make those less stiff actually if they're a bit more elastic I think we might have a bit more of a Ah, that's interesting. So, let's try again. Very nice. I mean, let's just try fewer particles. And if we have fewer particles, um, there'll be kind of more gaps. 
in the uh, kind of resulting pattern. Wow, that's a bit quick. Let's go to the scale, and again, I'm just going to turn that scale down again because it's going in a little bit out of control. And then that's going to be look. This is a really slow creep now as these particles are making their way along. And of course, this is kind of procedural in a way, really, because if we go to the emitter and we go to the advanced tab and change this random seed of the emitter, those particles are going to be born in a completely different place, uh, which means you're going to get a different uh, growth, different pattern, and a completely different spread. So that is one interesting way of um, creating a particle kind of particle growth shockwave look using constraints. We don't have to render those constraints. We can just use them to create a bit of particle movement, which is giving us this really nice kind of organic growth system as these particles creep on and grow across this plane.